What up guys, it's Drywall for Life here. Now, I want to talk about something that I've had on my chest for quite a while, and that is the Dragon Ball, uh, you know, Dragon Ball's universe's power scaling. Mostly, like I made the other video about modern day Dragon Ball, I want to specifically talk about how Dragon Ball is nowadays. I know Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z had their fair share of problems when it came to the power scaling, and there was quite a bit of inconsistencies, but it felt like it was still consistent enough for me to be okay with it and accept it or let things go because in general if we're being honest they did have problems but every you know fictional universe where they have powerful characters there's inconsistencies when it comes to power scaling when it comes to comic book when it comes to you know movies or tv shows when it comes to even other anime there's a lot of inconsistencies in it and a lot of you know outliers or plot induced stupidity but i felt like the level that it got to and you know, Resurrection of F, Super, and Broly was too high for me to, you know, just accept. I got to the point where I stopped caring or stopped taking power scaling serious. And, you know, I know a lot of people said that they did the, uh, the Frieza arc and all the way back in Z, but I felt like even though Z and Dragon Ball had their problems, you could tell who was stronger and who would win in a fight and how strong these characters were. And at least you can still gauge quite considerably the level of power. But nowadays, I just feel like the power scaling has gotten to the point where anybody and everybody can become a big threat or become super powerful, and it's just stupid. And you feel like they've made Goku and Vegeta, they try to make them sound like they're more powerful, but they also made them weak as hell. Because if they're so powerful, how come Frieza was able to surpass them within four months of training and one transformation? How come Android 17 was able to surpass uh, Goku and push him to Super Saiyan Blue and, you know, even was holding back against him? just by you know stopping poachers how come uh, trunks was able to obtain super saiyan rage and now handle goku black and uh, zamasu by himself and do a better job than both of them and even take out merge zamasu by himself when super uh, super saiyan blue vegeto couldn't even do it in the time limit that he had and then we had you know kale walking through super saiyan blue kamehameha and we also had you know broly surpassing both goku and vegeta so much to the point where they had to fuse and even in the fusion, they had to go Super Saiyan Blue just to beat the guy. So I just feel like the the power scale has gotten to the point where I, I, it just broke my immersion. And after the whole kill walking through Super Saiyan Blue, Goku's Kamehameha, I kind of gave up on Dragon Ball's power scaling. Obviously, I do still make videos about it, but it's more of me talking about why I hate the power scaling and why I wanted, I wish it was better. I'm not talking about, oh, they're this powerful, that powerful, because let's be honest, any form, anything we see that they do crazy can be, you know, contradicted later on because the show has no consistency at all. I can't uh, definitively say this this character is going to win or that character is going to win. Goku and Vegeta might be shown to be kind of significantly powerful, but I can't even, you know, if I'm being honest, I can't even tell if Super Saiyan uh, Goku and Goku and Vegeta and Super uh, Dragon Ball Super are stronger than their counterparts in Z. I feel like from what I've been shown that. Z, Goku, and Vegeta are stronger than Super Goku and Vegeta because of how much they struggle against characters that they shouldn't be. It's one thing if it's a new character they're struggling against, like Hit, Jiren, Granola, Moro, different, like, new characters I'm fine with. But having, you know, characters like Frieza, Seventeen, Trunks be a threat to them or being able to handle them or, you know, reaching the level of power, I just feel like it doesn't matter anymore. Super Saiyan Blue is trash, Super, uh, Super Saiyan God is trash, Goku and Vegeta are just trash, the power scaling is just trash in general. I, I quit on it because I don't know who would win in a fight. And I see people all the time nowadays saying, Super, Super Saiyan Blue Goku versus this character, Super, Ultra, uh, Master Ultra Instinct uh, Goku versus this character, or, you know, uh, Vegeta versus this character, that character. I'm just like, why are you doing this? When I see this, when people do that, I'm like, you know what? I cannot definitively say Goku or Vegeta win in a fight if you're using super version of them. Because the is so inconsistent, you can make arguments for them being super powerful, but also make arguments for them being weak. So if somebody said that Goku would lose in a fight, and you know, uh, to a weaker character, and somebody was like, "No, no, they can win," I can't really disagree with them because from what we've seen in Super, anybody can kick these guys' asses if they tried a little. Like these guys are nothing special anymore, and it pisses me off. I don't know why people have accepted it, like. They're trying to tell us that Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta are strong, but then these guys are getting dominated by everybody. They should not be getting dominated by these people. And people saying stupid things like, what, so you don't want them to struggle? No. I don't have a problem with them struggling. I have a problem with struggling against people that they shouldn't. There should still be a level of, like, you know, power. 
And people are just saying, I want these characters to be more powerful. You guys sound like idiots. Just giving everybody a power boost out of, like, pulling out their hats is just lazy. At least make it consistent. At least make it make sense. At least do it sometimes. Don't do it every time. I hated Super Dragon Ball Super Broly because the power scaling made no sense. Broly being that powerful was ridiculous. I hate this so much to the point where I feel like, you know what? I'm going to be making a mini series talking about every power scaling uh, uh, moment throughout Dragon Ball nowadays that I felt like it's stupid. I'm going to go from Battle of Gods to Resurrection of F, both the movies and the anime. And then I'm going to go talking about all the problems I had in the anime when it came to power scaling. And then uh, I already did Broly, so I might do some stuff about it, but I would try to probably mostly stay away from that since I really did it. But I just hate the power scaling and what it's got to the point where anybody can become, you know, strong and there doesn't matter about consistency, doesn't matter about, you know, actually making sense anymore. It's just, oh, look, this character's powerful. Let's put this in the story. It's just stupid writing. It's like these writers don't know, like, how to write a story that's not only, you know, uh, moves the plot, but it also makes sense. And Toriyama is not off the hook either. A lot of people try to give, you know, Toei and Toriyama crap, saying the manga doesn't make sense or the anime doesn't make sense. Yeah, but guess what? Toriyama made Dra uh, Re uh, Resurrection of F and Broly, and both those had shitty power scaling in it anyway. And on top of that, Toriyama still oversees all this stuff. So people need to stop giving him so much leeway, saying, well, you know, he just writes rough drafts and he texts us. Guess what? He's still the show, uh, the creator. He should be checking this stuff more thoroughly. If I, if I was Toriyama and I saw this uh, bad writing, I'm like, nope, we cannot have that. Nope, we cannot have that. But also, he himself has done it in, uh, you know, Resurrection of F and Broly. So he's a hack himself. He doesn't know anything about power scaling either. And, you know, I started, I wanted to power scale Dragon Ball a lot. And this is what a lot of fans do. But one thing that a lot of fans need to understand is for power scaling to work, it does require the other two things that I explained in my, you know, uh, power scaling video, but it requires one more thing, and that is the author or authors caring about, you know, the power, uh, the power scaling in general. So there's some, there's two types of writers. There are one type of writers that write character stories based off of just, you know, plot and story. And they're more focused on the story and getting, you know, either a message across or just making an entertaining story. And a lot of these times. These guys might implement, like, characters having insane power, but that's not their main focus. They don't care if it makes sense or not. They just want a fun story. Whereas there's other ones that try to showcase them being more powerful, saying, look, they're, they're, they're a symbol for this. They're, they're very powerful. They're super, they're super power beats. They can do this, like, extraordinary things that us regular people um, look at it like, wow, are admired by, you know, admire. So those are the two types of writers. And... It really depends on writing with power scaling when it comes to that, because oh, the writer, let's say, cares about how powerful these characters are. They're gonna make it consistent, and it's easy to make you know, versus uh, battles or debates about how powerful these characters are, because the writers are trying to at least put some consistency in it, and they're they're caring about how powerful they are. But then there's the writers like Toriyama who don't give a crap about power scaling. I highly doubt he cares how powerful Goku or Vegeta looks. He might make them look powerful and probably put some like, you know, crazy feats. But that is just to showcase like making it look cooler. But in reality, of you know, whether the power scaling makes sense or not, he doesn't care. That's not his focus. His focus is just to get the plot along and either make money off of it or just get a story that he finds entertaining out. But he does not give a crap of you know the of the power scaling is consistent so when you think about it like that i'm just like you know what why is us as dragon ball fans try to make excuses for his bad writing when it comes to power scaling why do we try to fit it into a narrative try to make it make sense try to argue for it defend it when he himself doesn't care why do we as fans as fans try to you know be so we're so like you know uh, strict and hard and stuck on, uh, you know, power scale and saying, these characters can do this and that, but then the writer themselves doesn't care. Why do we put more effort into the power scale than them? If we're putting more effort into power scaling than them, then that just means to us that they don't care. So if the writer doesn't care, it doesn't matter how much we care about the power scaling, it won't matter. And that's how I felt like it. After, like, you know, the whole kills, uh, walking through Super Saiyan Blue, coming around, around, I'm like, you know what? Toriyama, Toy, Toy Animation, Toy Taro, they don't care about the power scale. They don't care how powerful these characters are. They don't care if it makes no sense, this and that. They just write whatever they want to. So after that, I was like, you know what? 
of Toriyama and the, you know the rest don't give a shit about the power scaling, I don't give a crap either. I'm not gonna be saying Goku could be this character, that character could be that character. I do make power scaling videos because in general I just like power scaling. But whenever I talk about you know Dragon Ball, especially nowadays Dragon Ball, I, I I don't have a problem with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. But when it comes to like you know Resurrection of F and Super and Broly, whenever I talk about that, I usually just talk about the stuff that I don't like and how it's stupid. And I'm like I said, I'm gonna be making videos talking about these dumb stuff and why I feel like it doesn't make sense. And I'm gonna be also going in what they should have done instead of going this stupid route. But I feel like he himself does not care. So for us to care so much, just, you know, we're just wasting our time. Toriyama doesn't care. And on top of it, when I hear people using this in debate, who would win in a fight? Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, Ultra Instant Goku, Master Ultra Instant Goku. I'm just like, you do know Dragon Ball Super's power scaling doesn't make sense, and they don't care if it makes sense or not. So trying to, you know, gauge how powerful Goku is, is, is ridiculous. Because I can't even tell who would Goku beat in his in Super uh, in his own series, how the hell am I going to be able to tell who could he, who he could beat outside of the series? I can't say he can beat this character or that character. Of I can't tell if he can beat who he can beat in you know Dragon Ball itself. Uh, Dragon Ball itself, it's just that inconsistent. I can't definitively say Goku's this strong or that strong, or Goku and Vegeta can beat this character or that character. Whenever I see people debating and I see Dragon Ball super fans getting buttered, I'm like. You can't be mad at these guys for using this. You have to be mad at the writing and how stupid it is. Because yes, they do put a lot of crazy and impressive feats, but also a lot of times they do things like, you know, make them look weak. You, you can talk about how he's on a godly level, he's a godly being, he's this and that. But then they can also turn around and say, didn't Kale walk through that? What does that even mean? Frieza was able to surpass that godly level of power within four months of training. That doesn't mean anything anymore. Like. Nothing means anything in Dragon Ball Super and in Resurrection Raft and Broly. I think at this point, power scaling doesn't really matter. I still do try to enjoy Dragon Ball, but my enjoyment for it has died down quite a bit. And I've gone from loving the series to kind of, you know, having a love-hate relationship with it. Obviously, it's Dragon Ball, and my channel's called Dragon Ball for Life. So I'm going to always be a Dragon Ball fan, but that doesn't mean I'm going to accept every crap that gets thrown in my face. And I don't think you guys as fans should do that either. If you see stupid writing, call it out. Stop defending this BS. I feel like these Dragon Ball Super fans, they're not even trying to just say this because they're like, this is what they generally feel. I feel like they're just saying this just to say, oh, I don't agree with you. I want to defend it. You're just being a fanboy. Being a fanboy doesn't mean you're a good fan. It just means you ask kiss anything that comes out of the series. These guys go to so such lengths that they even talk trash about Dragon Ball Z. The Dragon Ball Z is this and that. Are you kidding me? You're talking shit about the originals? to defend this crap, I feel like Dragon Ball nowadays is like um, the Terminator franchise, you know? It started off good with the first two, like the first one was uh, really good, and then the second one was more amazing, uh, and you know, depending on the fans, they like the first or second one more, but we can always definitively say the first two were great, and everything else after that was just crap. I feel like everything else after that became crap. The only thing I liked that came out of, you know, Dragon Ball nowadays was Battle of Gods. I rank Battle of Gods as, you know, the, the highest Dragon Ball film of all time. I That's my favorite Dragon Ball film of all time still to this day. So, I still, I love I love some stuff when it's good writing. But when it's bad around like Resurrection of F, Broly, Super, I just can't pretend to, you know, accept it. So, as fans, people who disagree with this, don't be afraid of these Dragon Ball Super fanboys. Call it out. Say it like it is. Say what you feel about it. Because just like they have the right to, you know defend this series and uh, talk great about it, you should also have the right to talk bad about it and call it out for bad writing. It's, and just because you say something negative about it doesn't mean you're a hater. And just because you say something always, you know, defend it doesn't mean you're a fan. It just means you're a fanboy. You can be a fan of something and still criticize it. And I still love Dragon Ball. The reason I criticize it so heavily is because I want it to be better. I know it can be better and it should be better. And I know a lot of people say, well, Dragon Ball was never that in depth. Well, here's the thing for you guys. I'm not trying to say Dragon Ball it needs to be uh, thought-provoking or very uh, you know, mind-bending or crazy. All I'm asking for is some consistency. All I'm asking for consistency, the writing, the power scaling. I just want it to, things to make sense. I just want things to, you know, at least fit and come together. Not just we, we do whatever and throw anything at the wall, you know? That's how I feel like. I feel like the creative team is just... Get, getting old ideas and old stuff and just throwing it to the wall and trying to make it stick and just throwing whatever crap they can and 
sadly, for, uh, sadly enough, it's working. A lot of the fans accepted it. And even though I do want Dragon Ball Super to come back, I feel like when it does come back and when this movie comes out, I feel like I'm still going to be hating on it. Luckily for me, that will create more content to talk about it. But I'm going to be honest, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff I'm not going to like. Luckily for me right now, uh, my feelings towards Dragon Ball is a lot better, especially with the whole granola arc. I'm absolutely loving the, that manga. And when the chapter comes out, I think it's chapter 79. When that uh, chapter comes out, I'm going to be reading it. I'm going to be doing a video on it. I'm going to be reading it to you guys and then giving my thoughts about it. And just like the moral arc as a whole. So stay tuned uh, for that. I know I ranted quite a bit on this video, but you know, this is just how I truly feel about the Dragon Ball franchise. I'm not going to pretend to love everything. If there's something good, I'm going to praise it. If there's something bad, I'm going to go after it like, you know, an animal. So, yeah, I think we should all as fans be have the right to criticize it too, just as much as we have the right to defend it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hope some of you guys actually agree with me on this. If you don't, you can, uh, you know, leave comments in the comment section on why I'm wrong or why you think differently. I think we can have a nice discussion down in the comment section. So, I hope you guys have a good day.